Holy shit. Here we are, everybody. We're doing it again. Episode 82 of Kill Tony. Welcome, Monday. Holy crap, holy. The buzz is happening. We, uh, Louie is in another room tonight, and we also sold out. You're not going to stop us, Louis C.K. All right. I'll go up against number one. Let's do this. I'm so excited to have everybody here. I just had a delicious meal from our one and only sponsor, Elise Lane, everybody. Oh, there yeah. she is. She's that the girl with the pan, professional gourmet chef, ready for hire. She's on Twitter at Elise Lane, E-Y-S-E-L-A-I-N. She made pad thai for me, vegan pad thai for the little baby boy. The people that eat like humans got pork tenderloin, rice noodles, bean sprouts, cilantro, egg, peanut, soy, all underneath a tamarind sauce. Elise Lane, everybody, come on. So good. I chowed that. Delicious. I got hiccups because of how fast I ate that. So much fun. I had an amazing weekend. We both did. Just fun, doing what we do. Normal weekend in comedy. We do the ice house. We come here. We run around. We do our spots. And uh, I had a lot of fun this weekend. When I was driving to the Ice House and back, I'd been listening to our friend who's performed on the last two shows, Pat Reagan. He has an album called Pat Reagan Smells Like Shit that's available everywhere. And I'm just, it, it's stuck in my head. I'm singing it at the top of my lungs. We've had him on the last two episodes. Every time he performs, it's, it's, it seems like a song's going one direction. He ends up fucking his friend Greg's dad. Like, <laughs> It's always filled with fun, and you never know what to expect, so we're bringing him back. His third time on the show. It's the great Pat Reagan, everybody. Here he is. Yeah. Little music stylings from Pat Reagan. His new album, Pat Reagan Smells Like Shit, available everywhere. Ladies and gentlemen, Pat Reagan. Oh, holy shit, I just did it. I just killed Greg's dad's new boyfriend. Now you will see, there's no one but me. I'm gonna be your new boyfriend. Man, I can't wait, it's gonna be great. We're gonna have a wild time. I just might cry, don't ask me why. I'm sure it has nothing to do with the murder that I just did. Murder that he just did. Cause I'm emotionally distant from the murder that I just did Murder that he just did So don't ask me why I'm crying Whoa! Oh, cause it's none of your fucking business, Greg's dad A knock at the door, who is it for? Special delivery for Greg's dad. You look inside, it's not in a bag. A new diamond ring, clinging to finger number four. I say I murdered your boyfriend, will you marry me? You asked me how did he die, I say who cares? I say, hey, Jeff, you know I love you more than anything. You close your eyes and hang your head. And then you say, yes, 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 yes. You say, yes, fuck, yes, fuck, yes, fuck, yes, fuck, yes. We make love on the kitchen table. And you start to hum a Peter Gabriel song on. I'm the luckiest baby boy with basic cable. You're my soulmate. Fuck Greg's mom. Fuck Greg's mom. Ding, ding, dong. Fuck Greg's mom I'm a baby boy You're my friend Greg's dad Greg was a source of joy But now he is dead and so is someone else You know I just can't help myself I did it all in the name of love 
Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Pat Reagan, everybody. For those of you following the storyline, the... I don't know if they followed the story on that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you should give a recap right before each episode. Yeah. <laughs> and last week, Greg got ass sex from an older man. <laughs> What's crazy is that the last couple times, there's been a part where I feel like, I don't know, maybe he gets so excited. I don't know what happens, but I know the words that he didn't know there in the middle. Right? That's how much I've been listening to his album, how obsessed with You've got to listen to this album in order. You did, right, Jared? Yep. Unbelievable, right? Yep. I'm telling you, it's freaky. Freaky comedy album. And I'm not a big uh, comedy music com combining the two. I love comedy. I love music. I like them separate. I think Pat Reagan is the exception and the future. One more time for Pat Reagan, everybody. <laughs> Follow him on Twitter at Patty Reagan. That's P-A-T-T-Y-R-E-G-A-N. <laughs> ah, a little something. So we have the listeners of this podcast hungry. We have them with songs stuck in their head. And that's not even what the show's about, guys. This is Kill Tony 82, where comedians sign up for the chance to do a minute in front of me and some always funny guests. But we always have somebody keeping an eye on us, a head of security, if you will. It used to be a guy in a $5,000 Iron Patriot suit until he said that he got too big for the show and that until it's picked up by a major TV show, he's not coming back. By a major TV network, he's not coming back. So what ended up happening, oh, that might be him calling right now. Uh, what ended up happening is to show him exactly how replaceable he was, we re replaced him with a brand new type of Iron Patriot every week since. This is one of our favorite Patriots that we've ever had, and he's also the damn newest paid regular of the world-famous comedy store. My pal, Earl Skakel, everybody. <laughs> Wow. I feel so safe. Get closer. <laughs> Holy shit. Josh, Josh and you sort of have a resemblance. I never really noticed until now. Josh, get back up there for a second. Get, get back up there. It shouldn't be a fucking delay, dummy. Look at these two next to each other. That is unbelievable. Oh, I've never noticed that Holy before. Holy shit. I'd imagine Josh doesn't quite have the same thing under the shirt that he has going Take on. Take it off, Josh. Let's see what yeah. you have. No, it's yeah, all held yeah. it's all held together by a Hello Kitty bow tie. I'd hate for that to uh <laughs> I'd hate for that to all get messed up. Big Earl Skakel so, is with uh, us, everybody. Just at, fresh from getting passed. Always the funniest, uh, one of my funniest friends. We're always riffing in the back. The other night we had, were having so much fun, you gave me a bear hug at one point. I thought I was having a heart attack the rest of that entire night. We got a great body, man. I love touching it. No, it's easily breakable. Not a lot of calcium going on in these bones. Uh, how you doing, man? What's been happening? You just got passed. What's next for you? Um, you know, get the full Iron Patriot outfit so I don't look so stupid. <laughs> 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 I don't think it's stupid at all. You have one of the best bodies in all of stand-up comedy, without a doubt. Oh, well, that's not saying much. <laughs> right, exactly. That's Since like Red Band has the second best body in stand-up right. comedy. It's like saying you're the skinniest girl and the biggest loser. Hey. <laughs> I love it. Well, uh, let's get this party started. We have two of our funniest guests uh, that we've ever had on. Uh, one of them's coming back for his uh, second time on the show. The other one, it's his first time. Put your hands together for the great. You know him. We love him. It's Moshe Ketcher and Michael Costa. Holy shit. The two funniest MK initials in all of comedy. That's right. We're double MK. Doubt. I thought you, don't you always book the guests based off of initials? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's what I know. This yeah. Right. Uh, Earl, so. I've got to say that is a true commitment to doing an hour long visual based <laughs> joke on a podcast. That's, hey, it's like be, cold. I mean, anything beats the house racist. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> oh, we miss the house racist. Okay. Michael, you've been in, uh, you've been up there at a uh, roast battle that takes place here on Tuesday nights, and uh, I said I have to fucking get you on Kill Tony. I can't believe it's taken this long. I can't believe it's taken this long. I can't believe you've done 82 of these things. Yeah. That's unbelievable. I'm always excited to be on anything that's the 82nd one. <laughs> well, you're the 80, you're the 82nd funniest comedian <laughs> in Los Angeles. <laughs> well, that, actually, that, wait, that there's, two comedians, yeah. there's two comedians per thing, and I've done it twice, so that makes you... 
Like Whoa. 180 second funniest, funniest person in Los Angeles with the name MK. Right. right. And I'm honored to be here because of that. And especially honored because I've never seen Earl with a shirt off. And it is a sight. It is a beautiful sight. <laughs> I mean, I'm not gay, but you, you're a good looking guy. Thank you. Well, I, I'm hey, not gay and, either. And thank you both for saying that you're not gay. We were, <laughs> we were getting very uncomfortable. Is it because I'm sitting like this that people have to say I'm not gay? Do I have to do this? Does that make it more to not the good? podcast listeners? Earl has his shirt off. <laughs> yeah, Michael has a dildo in his ass. That he is. <laughs> but I'm not gay. But he is not gay. There's nothing gay about it. There's nothing gay about a dildo in your ass, by the way. Just just so we can really clarify. Unless the dildo is owned by another man. That's correct. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, or it could be lent out to a woman who's using it pro bono. Oh. With Bono mm. from U2, the U2, the lead singer pro. of U2. Oh. Oh, who, that Bono. Who has glaucoma, so he can't tell that you're a man. I think that's more of a Bono. When you said pro Bono, I thought you meant Chaz. <laughs> right. Pro Chaz Bono. Which I am, but I'm not gay. <laughs> <laughs> Big Earl, uh, every week the Patriot always asks our guests a question. Anything you want to find out about either one of these guests? Well, uh, you see the gigs I'm booking currently. Any advice? <laughs> <laughs> um... I've never had to take my shirt off for a comedy gig, so I think you're actually going to skyrocket. Is your name? When does your name go on the wall? Uh, Am I allowed to ask a question back? Yeah. Okay. Uh, they're going to put Tommy's name in black. In my <laughs> <laughs> Once your name goes on the wall, everything changes. Oh, absolutely. Every, I mean, literally, o overnight. Yeah, agents, so, agents actually come here from the top Hollywood agencies <laughs> just scouring the wall to man. see who they can sign. So it's soon. It's soon for it's you. It's soon for you. What's well, up with your body, though? <laughs> uh, you know, I'm a very insecure guy, so I have to work out a lot. Oh, is that what it is? Weights and stuff? It weights, cardio, sex. Sex. <laughs> cardio sex or cardio oh, no, sex? I, I tap out in a minute after sex. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> as long as she comes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> wait, wait. She, wait, she can come? She can come. What? I, I, know, I learned this recently, too. I never heard about that. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> I love it. Only if I have these gloves on. <laughs> Obviously, we are in good hands tonight, so let's get the party started, everybody. Tonight, over 30 young comedians signed up for the chance wow. to do one minute. One minute. And then talk to us afterwards on a live podcast in front of an awesome crowd and a bunch of great podcast listeners. Comedians, you know how it works. 60 seconds is up when you hear the sound of a kitty. Did you hear that? That means your time's up. Did you hear all the... <laughs> that should be part of the sound effect, the girls saying, aw. Aww. One more time, guys. Listen to that kitty at 60 seconds. But Is that what go. it sounds like when she comes? No, that's, that's what Delia's house sounds like. <laughs> uh, don't make fun of the mountaintop. <laughs> <laughs> you said the D word. Um, and, uh, guys, that wrap it up with the kitty, or else you're going to bring out the angry West Hollywood bear. It's like steady box. There he is. Oh. <laughs> All right. That old bear into driving down the PCH into yeah. a horse. Yeah. That bear was obviously fucking that horse. Yes. Not, on the PCH. Not, not gay, though. No, not, not gay. gay. Not gay. Not it was gay. a lady horse. <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> I feel like you are there. So let's get into it, guys. Doing the first 60 seconds tonight. First comedian. Goes by the name of Michael Scherzer. Here he comes. Michael Scherzer, everybody. Here he is. Thank you so much. Isn't it sort of redundant to say that you have a new baby? Like, where are all those old babies hiding at? You know? I told that joke to a girl on a date, and she said with a straight face, dumpsters. So I asked her to marry me. I don't think that Democrats should be able to legislate guns or Republicans' vaginas. My reasoning? Shouldn't be able to write laws about something you've never touched with your own hand. I would extend that to say that you shouldn't write laws on subjects about which you're totally uninformed, but that would pretty much put Congress out of business. <laughs> Have you guys seen that new show? It's called Last Paraplegic Standing. <laughs> it's great. You can watch an entire season in just one sitting. Each episode only lasts about 30 seconds. And uh, I feel like any whale could be a humpback if you're brave enough to undertake the challenge. 
cool. <laughs> How's my time? Yeah. Uh, all right. let's, let's let's end this quickly before anyone sees it. No, I'm just kidding. How it is? There it was. Thanks. There was the kitty. <laughs> Made it through, Michael. How long have you been doing stand up? Can I actually ask you how long you think I've been doing stand up based on that performance? Do you For really you want me to say that? Yeah, I really do. Yeah. What would you have guessed? Um, I, I mean, would I, I would say between one and two years. And I think the fact that you ran out of material in a one-minute set speaks <laughs> <laughs> right, I mean, probably a depth of time in our field. Yeah. I, I mean, I, 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 what would your guess be, Tony? Well, my guess, it's, it's weird because he's asking how long I think he's been doing it. Yeah. So that makes my guess a different guess. Right. Going off, if I only knew you from the 51 seconds of thunder and lightning that you threw out tonight, oh, yeah. I would probably guess that you've been doing stand-up three to four months. But yeah. since you're asking, I would say I'm six thinking, to seven oh, times. man, this is like when, uh, uh, when the Dread Pilot Wesley went up against Vincini in uh, The Princess Bride. <laughs> wow. I, I can almost remember that reference. <laughs> uh, it's, been se it's been seven months, and uh, I didn't necessarily run out of material so much as I was just bombing and wanted to get it over quickly. I mean, I didn't necessarily think it was a bombing. Right. I, I mean, you know, maybe, wow. maybe. What does that say about my comedy? If I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> I did think it was interesting that what I thought was your best joke was got the least response. The hunchback. Yeah, the hunchback the, is not the hunchback yeah. whale, but the, <laughs> the humpback, humpback whale. Humpback whale. Oh, thank you. Right. Uh, I I you. said a year. That'd be a weirder, more conceptual <laughs> joke of us. Any any whale can be a hunchback whale. If you're willing to undergo really the trying, challenge, yeah. like, what? What are we doing exactly? <laughs> you put a hump on a whale. I like that he's, it, he had structure and he at least had written, a, like, it was a structured joke. That's what made me think he had been doing it at least a year. Uh, but you're also first. You're doing a fucking minute. I don't know. You're not, I mean, it's. I how thought old, you did pretty good. How old are you? 25 years old. And what did you do before you started stand-up seven months ago? And what do you do for work? I worked in politics. I was going to ask you right. about mm. that because of your silly little, uh, you took a little misdirect there and made a joke on Congress. That, right. Yeah. And I like that you went from a dead baby joke, a true classic, <laughs> right. straight right. into a takedown of right. the U.S. Congress yeah. and a Bill Hicksian move that right. we did not expect from yeah. you. There's so much crossover between those two, really. Yeah, it's, I see that. It's an interesting left turn. I would almost rather you start with Congress so I think you're like a smart political comic and then right. go into a dead baby joke. Right. That would be more of a, a more interesting turn for me. Okay. For me. What were you doing in, uh, or what do you still do in politics? I managed campaigns, but I'm trying to get out of it and like get more into comedy. Oh hell yeah! You got to get away from that l low paycheck and into this yeah. cash cow. Oh yeah. Cow <laughs> oh, yeah. That we you got see, over here. you see Earl uh, paid regular. <laughs> see how well he's doing right now. <laughs> Yeah. That guy's actually one of your goals. I, I literally, <laughs> like, I aspire to be him one day. Uh, you're, you're already there. Hey, man, thank you. All, all, you, all you need is time on stage because you, you have the idea of what a joke is, which is actually amazing how many people don't know, you know, that, that we see here. But uh, you know the, how to do it. You just didn't, didn't sell it to me. It felt like you're reading a script that you, every time you're on stage, you would do the same exact way. I don't know. It just you you didn't sell it at all. Yeah, I mean, not a lot, but like I get up a good amount, like three times a week, probably. And, and how? Uh, well, why just three times a week? I do jujitsu four times a week. Oh, uh, fuck shit. off! Yeah, <laughs> prove it, motherfucker. No, Holy okay, I'm sorry. Shit. Are you kidding me? No. You, you, those jujitsu guys. It's would, funny, like the nerdy-looking guys that do jujitsu that you'd never oh, expect. Thanks, man. Appreciate would, it. Would you, <laughs> you, you do you. jujitsu because you have to, right? That's right. Survival of the fittest. Really. It's so funny how like girls love funny guys and they love guys that can fight, but how unfuckable you are, nevertheless. <laughs> <laughs> would you do my podcast, Kill Michael, where I have thirty brand new jujitsu people come up and do a <laughs> one minute of jujitsu? <laughs> Yeah. Red Man, would you would you broadcast that? Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Would. No yeah, shirt absolutely. on either. <laughs> and I totally love to do panel on that. Side. Yeah, I'll kill what? that. No problem. Okay. What um what do you think you're better at jujitsu or comedy? Probably jujitsu. I've been doing it for like four years. And what belt are you? <laughs> I'm a blue belt. You're a blue belt. Blue belt. Uh, <laughs> he, just, he just scares people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Boom! Ah! Fuck! I've no. legitimately never been this terrified on stage before. That's so cool. Right Did now or when you were performing? Like, like right well this whole contiguous like this whole <laughs> like, like this very fucking moment like from the moment that i stepped up and you called my name and i was like oh my god i'm first right yeah that's fucking perfect yeah. but it's a good thing to do to a beginner comic because 
there is no all we get up there is judged. Right. So really, you might as well get it started right yeah. off the bat. Yeah. Start burning judged. that soul away, learning how to perform <laughs> when you're fucking busy. Yeah. And other than the jokes we're making at your expense because we're small petty people and can't help it, <laughs> no one's really saying anything bad about your act. I mean, you're yeah. you're right where you're supposed to be. At yeah. seven months, that's how your comedy's supposed to be, and you're supposed to be, you know, trying to figure out how to get a persona and be dynamic on stage and stuff. And you've got some funny jokes, and you just keep going and do it more. <laughs> More than three. I thought I got the bear thing and tell me to shut up. <laughs> 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 I deserve that. I deserve that. I don't know about you, but I would love to hear him talk. I only had it in a minute, so it's tough. But I would love to hear you talk to some jujitsu jokes. Not right now, but I'm saying in your set. Do that's you think, that's do unique. Do you have any? Like, if you were going to talk What's about What's the jiu-jitsu? quickest way to tap a keg? Rear naked choke. <laughs> Wow, that's a definitely oh, a jujitsu okay. yeah, joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a jujitsu joke. That's, that's a five percenter right there. That's something you whisper in a guy's ear when you have him in the clutch or something, right? <laughs> right, and then he starts laughing, and then you're able to <laughs> yeah, joke exactly. further. Yeah. Sink in the joke. <laughs> has anyone done the actual move? Uh, have it, has anyone checked your oil? No, no. But you that, know that's a move, right? I know that's a move. I want to check your army, yeah. t- stick your finger in their butt yeah. hole. Yeah. It's Why pop- would you do that move? It's pop. <laughs> it's it pop- works. Like, it yeah. works. I'm not gay, but I love that jujitsu move. <laughs> Sounds it's a better. common soccer play, for real. Yeah, yeah. Common like, soccer play. You know, like oh, yeah, Italian totally. mud wrestling or whatever? Like, like no, I don't. Wrestling? No. Dude, you need to spend more time on YouTube, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what is Italian mud wrestling? Like, show, show Earl. Show it on Earl's body. How <laughs> oh, doing? Uh, oh, I just, want you to fuck, I just want you to fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> give me dude, give me. Let's let's do this in a less pri- like a more private location. Uh, oh Jesus! Fuck yeah, <laughs> dude! I just want to say thank you all so much for the opportunity. And most, I really like enjoyed that letter that you sent to the woman on Fox News. Oh, thank you very much. Appreciate that. <laughs> well, thank there you. you go, everybody. Michael shirts are coming in. Hey, Michael. He's never been this nervous before. I take. Job, I man. take back what I said about you being unfuckable. I'll fuck you right now, man. <laughs> okay. Sorry. By the way, that handshake thing at the end, uh, let's not make a tradition out of that, everybody. <laughs> he went for it. We all did it. But that can't be a thing. <laughs> what, did we, I gave him the, my balls. You need to get a hand sanitizer sponsor up here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, Michael Scherzer's on Twitter at Son of Satan. Oh, wow. Oh, I'm geez. guessing... Uh, Satan, yeah. you know Satan. It's like right. it's, it, it's, yeah, yeah. it's the stuff you eat where you go. I wish this was meat instead. Right? Are you a vegan? Uh, no, but I'm like conscious of my meat. Oh, get it! Wow! Yeah. Uh, he's conscious of his meat intake, but he's not gay. Yeah. Just what we <laughs> just what we thought we liked you, man. Uh, I'm conscious of my meat intake. <laughs> <laughs> I like you. I like you. Michael Scherzer, everybody. One more time for Michael. We're just going to keep it moving right along. Your next comedian's name is Stretch SHP. Stretch SHP. Stretch, wow. Let me get to turn that on. How's everybody doing? Uh, Glad to be here. Um, Before I had comedy, guys, I had a bunch of cocaine uh, because I used to sell cocaine. And as you can imagine, those two worlds are very different. However, they are similar in one way, and that is in both worlds, you lose friends and coworkers tragically and suddenly. Uh, the funny thing about it is I, was always hear, I would always hear about it the same way. Like when I used to be out on the block, something would happen, and uh, somebody would be like, yo, Shamik just got bust in the head two times, God. You know Shamik from 212. Or is born, you got bust, your cats came through in the black land from out of nowhere, like I'm coming to get my coat to cipher, God, and just let off crazy shots. Dude was lying there like a newborn baby, God. And then I got out of that world, and I'm like, oh no. I got out of that world, and I got into comedy, and I started making friends and coworkers, and the same thing started happening. I'd be at the comedy store, somebody would like come, come up and be like, yo, you heard what happened to Kevin? Yo, he just bust himself in the head two times, God. You know Kevin from the Laugh Factory, where this born nigga got bust. Yo, depression came through in the black land, was like, I'm coming to get my coach a cypher, God. And he just let off crazy shots in his own face. Holy shit. I'd love to hear uh, what that sound. That, that sounds like uh, you just read rap lyrics. Yeah. Uh, it, w- it, was, it was the act that was brought to you by the Wu-Tang Clan. I was off their first <laughs> album. Oh, you but actually I, plagiarized the Wu Tang Clan? Yeah. I did. Oh, you, cool, man. You guys don't know. You guys don't know that. Did you? <laughs> 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 
stretch. I like I, your style. We've been doing. St- you've been doing stand up a while. We've been doing it uh, together for yeah. how long? You've been doing it? Four years. Four years. Yeah. Right. I I'm, I may this, I may be super ignorant, but I don't completely understand the joke. There was. I'm going to be honest. There was a few words. I have no idea what the fuck. Well, you I started hallucinating well, at one point. Hey, I got to be you honest. Know what it is? I, I got to be honest. I understood everything, everything. you said. <laughs> I was feeling it the whole it time. It usually kills with like, you know I'm, what I mean? I'm from the same street. I'm from Queens and Brooklyn and other boroughs. <laughs> so I, I did. <laughs> Saying word is born is a cool phrase. So that's awesome. But wait, so okay, so I get it. I, the first someone part, got killed who yeah. deals co- cocaine or in the coke game. But then the sec the, the tie in I didn't understand. Am okay. I an idiot? No, no. When I bought when I bought it back <laughs> again. Said yes, far, yeah, like, you're dumb. Fuck. Yeah, you're dumb. <laughs> Straight up. When I brought it back again as the uh, comic or whoever, you know, what I'm saying I might have taken their life. I did the same. Act out, but okay, I got that. Okay, so I, again, I may be an idiot. I didn't realize no, in the racist, second part Michael. that the guy, that the person killed themselves. He was but, but, but now it goes <laughs> because you're saying they both, you both, you lose them both tragically. I get it now. I get it. I get it. I get it. I just made it that way. Now, Earl, you have a character that is very famous here at the comedy store. Ad, uh, ad. Big part of the why you, roast battle. Why don't you bring that back right now? It's called the house racist. How do you feel? If you, what would your character say if he was here right now? Uh, <laughs> this is so standing next up to you. Stretch SHP. Well, uh, <laughs> I think you should go to Ferguson and do that joke. You'll walk the whole audience. <laughs> Okie dokie. <All> right. uh, <laughs> Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, hey, Earl, why did you retire that character? <laughs> For the podcast <laughs> listeners. <laughs> For the, for the listeners at home, those were real gunshots from somebody yeah. in the back. <laughs> from the actual... Stretches shot Earl. Yeah, from the actual Wu-Tang Clan. They arrived, <laughs> shot Earl, and left. Um, I thought it was wise of you, after seeing how we roasted the last guy, to start your, your set off with, I used to be a cocaine dealer, I used to shoot people. So what do you got to say, motherfucker? <laughs> I love that that he st- starts off with I used to be a cocaine dealer. Right. It's it's personal. It's real. It gets your attention immediately. I love that part. It was after that that I didn't know what the fuck was going on. <laughs> well, I think it's a, it's a pretty long joke, and I tried to squeeze it yeah. into a minute. I just wanted to hear like what you would have like what you would say about like me using that part as an act out, using the Wu Tang lyrics as an act out. Like I Wait just a wanted. Wait a second. What about Wu Tang? You know, I was making a joke, right? No, wait, but wait, what no, happened? He's being serious. That's where actually we're taking the part where I started tripping and hallucinating. That's when it was going on because I couldn't understand what was going on because you started like it was lyrics. Yeah, to it, it was. You it were was really it's part saying, of it's part of a. You skit. were really saying rap lyrics at one point. It was it was part of a skit on their first album. Did you really used to sell cocaine? I did. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the whole part. Of <laughs> <laughs> You're allowed to do it. You're allowed to. Do it. Okay then. I mean, you've got three out of the four people here didn't entirely understand the joke. So that may give you some indication of yeah. how to proceed with the joke. And maybe those are true Wu-Tang lyrics, but I, a lot of white people may not understand that. I don't know. Did Agreed. you guys know it out there that those were Wu-Tang lyrics? Yeah, yeah. I mean, a couple of people did. Earl did. <laughs> Earl did. I saw them uh, open up a rat. And they just... <laughs> <laughs> from what album is that? Uh, it's from the... Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, the 36 Chambers. So that's the like fir- their first it's like album. A 20, it's like yeah. a 20-year-old album. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. like it's from their first album. I would yeah. say that's also a problem is to cite, you know, I mean, you're probably about my age, right? Yeah. Yeah, so to cite something that half of the audience doesn't even know is uh, hip-hop music, you know, they're just like, why isn't there a woman singing and a techno beat behind those rap lyrics? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, you know. Yeah, maybe uh, maybe do something with a little uh, new music. You know, you guys hear uh, Usher's new song? <laughs> oh, the yeah. one about the you could strip and he doesn't care about yeah. it. That one? It's about it's about him not caring about the girl stripping. <laughs> he doesn't care. He goes, I don't mind. You could stay out till three. Come home sticky. Yeah. <laughs> All this shit. Yeah. Actually, that actually would work. You know, both cocaine dealers and uh, open micro comedians stay out till three and come home sticky. So that would work. It would work. work. Absolutely. Black sure. Widow Baby. That's a, that's, that's, a, that's a different song. It's also out. Uh, stretch. What else? Anything crazy happened today to you? No, that's it. Just hung out with my son, took him to see Santa. 
for the first time. So you're out of the Coke game. Now you got yeah, the baby. Yeah, out of the Coke game. Been out for a while, four years. Do you ever think about how much Coke you could stuff in your baby's diaper and get away with? Like, uh, like you ever think about getting back in the game? Uh, no, I thought about it a while ago, but <laughs> nah. That's when you get caught, I feel like. Like, I got out. I had a successful career. Never got in trouble. Never got popped. You know what I mean? Walked out on my own accord and left. What's going on in the audience? The audience are yeah, having getting a little rowdy. I think everywhere. people are talking over there and people are getting upset. <laughs> oh, I got the security uh, iron uh, hurl <laughs> on the. Well, security. <laughs> oh, back up. Oh, oh, somebody's oh. got a cough. Wait, so Gary and Laney are, uh, are, 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 are all, who are always here. Somebody's coughing on them. Jerry, no cough. If you're going to cough up there, cover your mouth. <laughs> Fucking Jerry, you freak out. He'll stop a show with 100 people, live podcast. <laughs> He's giving him a napkin. Everything's Jerry's cool. furious. Everything's cool. Everything's cool. Earl, do you know Heim the Heimlich? If yeah, you need yeah, it? believe me, I do. Yeah, okay. By the well, way, if you are choking, <laughs> sir, just give it. tell Earl. Don't look at me because I don't know how to do that shit. Fun fact, Jerry is also the one that never turns off his cell phone and it always <laughs> yeah, rings true. every single show. And he's got it he's, he's got it set to that seventies ringer too, so it's like a real ringer like ring ring Dude, his cell phone's rotary. <laughs> stretch, it's so much fun with you. Good Thank job. You. Buddy. Thank you, Stretch. Figure it out. Word is boss, son. I said I said it sounded like he was reading rap lyrics yeah. as a complete joke. It didn't even it didn't get the laugh that I thought that it would. And then it turns out he was he was reading rap lyrics. There was like something it uncovered. He also a... called it an act out, and it wasn't an act out. Right. An act out is when you use your body physically and act something. It was more of a accent. Right. Yeah. Now that the cocaine dealer's gone, let's I, talk I, about yeah. that motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I've got some, some courage. Bullshit. Now I've got some courage. Yeah. When Earl was the house racist, he used to say that uh, black people act out all the time. <laughs> I mean, it was just the character saying that, not Earl. Right. <laughs> it's true. It's a slippery slope, isn't it? Yeah, okay. Well, I mean, you know, he's playing a character. Wait till he gets his name on the wall. You know, you let him get the name on the wall first before yeah. we uh, throw him under the... Are you no longer doing that for real? Uh, we're going to play a different character. Got it. Okay. Got it. Okay. <laughs> gay Earl? Is Gay Earl coming? I might be Gay Earl. I might be, uh, you know, who knows? <laughs> Uh, I always ask uh, comedians that are on for the first time this question, Mike, so I'm going to yeah. ask it uh, to you. Was there anything that you did when you very first started stand-up that you can't believe that you did that, like, you'd be embarrassed uh, that, you know, you're just like, wow, what a rookie, goofy move that was. That wasn't who I was at all. I always ask everybody this. I'm always yeah. amazed at who used to do something where, like, they'd, you know, take their shirt off and fucking do some dance or something, like, as their big closer, you know, or... Um... Or just a specific. I used joke. to iron my shirt. I used to like care, <laughs> and, and, and you know. I thought you meant on stage. No, on stage. Now that would be good. Yeah. That would be fucking good. Kenny Hill. I think the most common mistake I see from new comics is they will take the microphones out of the microphone stand and stand behind the stand and right. perform stand-up comedy. Yeah, that's something that's we talk classic. about. I mean, that is, a, that is like number one always. It's like, if yeah. you're going to take it out, just move it out of your way. Yeah, but I have a, I, I've mentioned this on this podcast before, I've got a nuanced uh, uh, metacritic criticism of your criticism. Wow. Which is that so many comedians have told young comedians to move the mic stand that now I, I, what I see is people get on stage and they move the mic stand with such deliberateness yeah. I can feel their comedy teacher yeah. telling right, them. Right, right, right. It happens a lot. It's funny on this show when we do it to somebody here. Like, it's like, they, well, like, I always go, how long have you been on stand-up? And they'll be like, this is my third time ever on stage. And I go, I could tell you didn't move the mic stand. Yeah. Always the next person that gets called up, no matter how long they've been doing it, it's just, it's ridiculous. Moving like, the mic they, stand. You, you just hear like, They'll hit the thing on the top of the ceiling, and then just you hear it just slam down as far perfectly behind them as it could be. Flick their cigarette on it. You remind me of something, though, when you say the iron the shirt thing, because yeah. I was the same way when I very first started. Uh, you know, you, I don't know if I if I thought this or if somebody told me like you have to look professional. And, yeah. And I remember I did this contest at the ice house where. First prize, you get some stupid shit, but second place, you get a side of French fries. <laughs> and, oh, uh, it's comedy festival it, or whatever. It that, that owners of it's something weird where they get these people that are just starting out in comedy, and they got me, man. I mean, they got me all the way. I was excited about this. I took the bus out to Pasadena. 
and uh, and I took and I wore a uh, like a crisp fucking sure. shirt with a tie. Like I'm like I'm going in. I'm gonna win this shit. Yeah. Like if you won, you became like a regular. You got another spot. I know that. Yeah. But there was a big drop off. Second place, a side of French fries. <laughs> and uh, I got there and I realized immediately that uh, everybody brought their friends. I think only my brother was there, or something like that. And uh, and it's all about having you vote on totally who did good. Sure enough. Guess who walked out with a side of fries that night? Tony. Fresh shirt McGee. Over teal, teal Tony. But well, my, no, but that's actually first place in a comedy competition. <laughs> French fries. Second place with no people, with having brought no people, is first is the funniest yeah. person right. in the room. That's true. And first place know, is the people. And I didn't know that uh, comedy competitions were that like terrible then. But I'll tell you, when you're taking the bus home <laughs> with your French with fries. your press shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I have a side of French fries and just a perfect tie and a perfect shirt. I mean, just fucking blades going down the arms. It was so perfectly pressed. I wish someone would have told me as a young comic that the competitions are what you, we just said they were. The best comic right. that doesn't bring people. The best comic is the one that usually plays a second because they didn't bring anybody. Right. You know, because and, that, and that's always something that I've been against. And even with this show, I've always specifically made a point to never have a winner or a loser yeah. or rewards or anything like that. Right. Because yeah. Everybody's a loser that participates. <laughs> yes, right? exactly. <laughs> including, the, including the guests. And who will be our next lucky loser? Um, doing a minute of stand-up comedy. Goes by the name of Becky Robinson. Becky. Should be interesting. Here she is. Move the stand out of the way here for a second. Okay. Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, sweatshirt says Kale, not Yale. So you know. Um, all right. Anyways, everyone's doing okay. Um, I am pretty new to LA. I just moved into this little shanty apartment in a part of town called WeHo. You guys familiar? It took me about uh, two hours to learn that WeHo was just short for we're homosexual. Um, it's been good. You know, I didn't know if I was going to like it at first, but I got to say it's kind of fun being a young straight woman in a bustling gay community. Yeah? I'm learning a lot, that's for sure. I, uh, I just turned 23 and I read a lot of inspirational quotes, you know, because I think I'm depressed and shit. And um, <laughs> one of them that keeps popping up on my feet is like, you are who you surround yourself with, whatever. And if that's the case, then I'm in for a real treat. Because I saw three gay Jewish men rollerblading down Santa Monica Boulevard last night at 2 a.m. in sequin shorts and velveteen crop tops. And I took a good look. Okay. I want to hear the rest yeah, of it. Yeah, me too. Oh, can Keep we? Keep going. What's that? How does it end? Is that it? Uh, I looked up at him and I genuinely thought, I aspire to be those men. <laughs> I'll tell Very you what, Moshe, funny, we, have, we, have, we should not have gone rollerblading last night. <laughs> 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 yeah, and by knew, the way, it was, it, it, was, it was one Jewish man. <laughs> yes. Michael's not, Jewish, not Jewish at all. Yeah. You and could confuse him for one. Uh, wow. He's tall and handsome? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. yeah. I all am right. anti-Semitic, though, so does that... Does really? that yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> or, or, <laughs> Earl's uncircumcised dick just got hard. <laughs> where, did, uh, where did you move to WeHo from? Uh, it's Brentwood. You're from L.A.? <laughs> yeah. So white. You're from L.A.? Uh, no, I'm from Portland, Oregon. Oh, okay. Mm. Yeah, good uh, stop that. How, how did, um, <laughs> how did you, Don't uh, before we get into saying how good you sure. were, how did you know they were Jewish? <clears throat> what? I don't, I. The rollerblades? I had a feeling. Yeah, like what? You, said, you said they were Jewish, all three of they them? They look Jewish. We okay. were right by Bar Lubitsch. Yeah. I don't know. Just curiosity. What does Jewish look like? <laughs> oh, here we go. Uh -oh. You're being recorded, Becky. You're being recorded, Becky. <laughs> yeah, because I've always it... guessed by smell. <laughs> 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 yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> Smells like gold, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Becky, were they stopping to pick up dimes <laughs> off the street? Is that how you knew? <laughs> they were carrying little buckets of matzo ball soup. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Just fit everywhere. So. It's weird how you have a different uh, voice on stage than your normal voice. Because your normal voice is like me. <laughs> Whatever you like. It was so, so weird. She wasn't I... doing Julia Child. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I 
<laughs> no, but like you, you, you definitely over you overdo it, and I noticed it. And I, I do you know that you do that? Is that a conscious thing? Because it's I didn't until recently, and people started coming up and being like, "Hey, I'm Becky. Hey, guys." And I was like, "I didn't get it." And now uh, I guess that's what it is. Uh, I, <laughs> I actually, um, I actually strongly disagree. Uh, w that uh, you overdo it. I think you have a. No, I didn't say you overdo it. I just said, it, like, I noticed it's more over. Like, oh, you do it more oh, when right. you're on stage. Like. I, okay. I thought that it was the thing that we were talking about in the beginning. How long have you been doing stand up? Uh, about a year and a half. Like, did you get. I mean, and this. I don't mean any insult by this, but, like, I was trying to place what it was. Are, are you. Is that someone else that does that kind of little hey, voice? I'm wondering the same thing. Because I thought it was like a very dis deliberate and decided persona which is very difficult to to have and to come up with but it felt also very familiar Who so are I, was some both, of your I was both impressed and i thought that perhaps maybe that influenced would, her in some way yeah. yeah i don't know maybe it maybe it is maybe I, molly <laughs> is, it, is it like a molly shannon kind of is it, or, sherry or, uh, or, or sherry o'terry sherry, sherry, sherry that's who i met oh, sherry o'terry that's what it is that, yeah if it's Quite sherry o'terry I, then I don't think it even mat it matters unless you're deliberately doing mm. Sherry or Terry. But if it's like, I, I, like uh, you know, Sebastian or something, like I was trying to like, <laughs> play, I was like going through the, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah. Do you feel like is it? Who's your favorite comedian? I do love. I, I'm Italian. I don't know. I do love Sebastian, but I don't. I, I didn't know who Sherry O'Terry was, and when people came up and they're like, "You're like Sherry O'Terry," I googled her, and I was like, "Oh fuck." Do you what? like John Caparillo too? <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of just, nice. just trying to get to to like I feel like you're of a of the, both those guys have very super strong yeah. personas on yeah. stage like uh, super strong affects on stage and you do I felt like you do too I, and I I liked it but I felt like you stole it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, no, I don't. I no longer feel like you stole it, but I would. Yeah. that's what I'm saying. I think it's just kind of a combination of watching a lot of comedy, and I like to do characters, and I wear a lot of wigs, and I think that it just kind of explodes on stage. And when you're new, your influences are so right. prevalent. Right. But yeah. if I may say something, which was, I was very comfortable watching you perform, which is great because yeah. you laugh when you're comfortable. You know what I mean? So I thought your stage presence was was fantastic. I have never heard the word homosexual before. I was kind of surprised. Yeah. yeah, that really genuinely made me laugh. I wasn't. I was. It was almost one of those jokes that's so good. You're like that must have been done before, which I hadn't heard it. But I don't know if that's true or not. But your stage presence puts me at ease, which was great to laugh at. I think you just got to keep doing comedy. Yeah, more. I think what me and Michael are saying is we think you stole your persona <laughs> and your material. Yeah. And then, and yeah, and, and can I can I add something? You also stole the joke of your shirt at the very beginning because you said That's this true. is pale. Unless she designed that shirt. <laughs> this is so weird because I feel like I need to say I, I thought you were delightful. I thought you yes, were really funny, yes, especially yes. for how long you've been doing it. I, I don't think you should drop the persona. I, I, I don't, unless you know. Unless, I wanted you to say, oh, yeah, I do this. And then I'll be yeah. like, aha, I found it. Yeah. But since you don't have that, I think keep doing it. I think it's really engaging and really funny. And that that WeHo joke is, yeah, I, I agree. It's almost like I can't believe that. I can't not. believe that we've never heard that before. Yeah. It's really funny. You thought of, where, 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 were you, where were you when you thought of that? I was stepping out of my shower. I'll never forget. What, what, can you Tell us about that. that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know when you there, just think about things when you're like washing the dishes or stepping out of your shower. Sure, and you're like, oh, we don't wash our own dishes. On that. I know you don't, but yeah, like but when you think though. about things, you're like dripping, like the shower, yeah, like sort of moisture. Well, and and you, you're, like, you're not on your period, you know when right? When you're uh, you're all soaked up and <laughs> yeah. you just uh, you have a thought and you're like, that's I could do that. Oh, you know when you're all soaked up yeah. <laughs> and you're not on your period, Becky. <laughs> uh Becky, are you are you single? Because Earl is, and he lives in WeHo. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, I'm single, but that's Whoa. okay. Hey, come come on. Would you ask a male comic, are you single, Tony? It's boring. You just you, <laughs> you just I'm not trying to get my male comic friends. Fuck, except Earl. She's too young. I like them a little older and beat up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, there you go, Becky. Come back again soon. You were great, Becky. You Thanks. did a great awesome. job. That Thank was great. You. Thank you so much. Becky Robinson on Twitter, all one word. She's the only Becky Robinson. Uh, uh, Earl just handed her his business card. I like that. I'll give her a business Funny card. and <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Bright future for Becky. Yep. Heck yeah. She just moved to WeHo. Earl, you've lived in WeHo for a while. Have you seen anything crazy lately? Uh, well, people ask me if I've ever seen the movie Philadelphia, and I... Uh, <laughs> I'll tell him if I want to see a guy die in a bath, he'll just go to Ralph's. <laughs> <laughs> Set me up for that. 
I love it. Which one? The one on Sunset there? <laughs> or the one down on yeah, uh, no, West? The one on uh, Santa Monica just east of Robertson. It's like, uh, yeah. Oh, sure. that, that's that the AIDS Ralphs? <laughs> that's oh. the AIDS Ralphs. <laughs> Watch out for the cucumbers. <laughs> You're saying somebody would do something with a cucumber and then put it back with the cucumber? Right. No, someone with, someone with AIDS. AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Jesus. That really is a dirty Ralph. This guy's dying of AIDS. He leaves his apartment. He goes to Ralph, <laughs> takes a cucumber into the bathroom, fucks himself with it, somehow also gets blood and other particulate on it, right. puts it back in the pile of yeah. cucumbers and says, welcome to Ralph's. And right. then roller, while, while roller blades your new open wound so that when you grab the cucumber, yeah. Holy shit. it all goes full circle. Yeah, well, prom a, king just walked in the back. They have a sale on T cells. So. Heck, everybody, prom king is here. Prom, prom king. king. Yeah. What's up? He's got the carnation. <laughs> Can I order another beer from somebody who's listening? Is that do I do that into the, the microphone night. or do yeah, I do that? No, yeah, you totally no, that got makes it. for good podcasting. Josh is all over. It. No, it really does on this show. We love it. Oh yeah, we encourage it. I would like a beer for Michael, please. Yeah. <laughs> I pulled another name out. Put your hands together cool. for Jessica Wellington. So have you guys ever been to Walmart and just wondered why? <laughs> Me too. I was actually shopping for underwear, though, and uh, I'm wondering why don't they have a larger selection, you know, sexy underwear for big women? You know, because they don't. It's fucked up. That's why I came up with my own invention. I want you guys to try this at home. What I like to do is just take my sports bras and flip them upside down. Just step right into them. That's right, let it simmer because it's a visual. <laughs> I think just recently I could start calling myself a comic, you know, because the best comics come from like childhood trauma and tragedy. So I was thinking back, I was like, shit, my dad was an alcoholic, my mom was a crackhead, I was raised by the trailer park. But now I know that was just a long term investment. <laughs> you know? <laughs> But it was recently, my, uh, my car was repoed, my bike was stolen, my purse and my iPad were ripped off. So I'm fucking excited, right? It means I'm like one gangbang away from my HBO special. That's right. Wow. I didn't want it, I didn't want it to be our. That's amazing. <laughs> Somebody really stole all that stuff from you? Oh yeah, it did happen. Was it Becky Robinson? <laughs> <laughs> she stole everything this trip. <laughs> Jessica <laughs> Wellington. So your persona, your material, and <laughs> Jessica's iPad. <laughs> and her motorcycle and somehow. Sports bra. Becky just killed herself in Stretch's joke. <laughs> Let's get to the gangbang. <laughs> so I thought I thought this was really interesting because now we, we, we the first comic group was saying uh, persona is something you develop, and then the last comic uh, Becky had like this very sort of ex like sort of a hyper accentuated persona. I feel I feel like you've got your persona down, and it's it's really you. It's totally, like, yes. it's you. Yeah, it's probably time. you times ten percent or something like that. Probably not quite that gruff all the time, no. but it's it's part of you. And I just I thought that was really cool. You've been doing comedy a while. Uh, three years in January. Yeah, I thought well, that was, where was at? Good. Sacramento. I just moved here. Ah, sweet. Oh, great. Well, welcome. <laughs> cool. Oh, you welcome. Didn't list that in your list of horrors you've been through. <laughs> <laughs> you spent your whole life in Sacramento? No, I'm originally from North Carolina. Oh wow. How long were you in Sacramento? Uh, three, four years, three and a half years. Wow. Yeah. You worked the punchline up there. Uh, yeah, Sacramento punchline. Yeah. Yeah. And yep. then you said somebody next to a mattress shop. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's literally next to a mattress shop. Really, it really is, and you have to walk by the huge mattress shop yep. to get to the comedy club, and it just makes you a little makes bit tired say. every time. I <laughs> once went through the. It makes you really want to lay down, no matter if it's if it's before the first show or after the mm -hmm. second show, no matter what. You're just like, look at all this fucking mattress. It's just a beach of mattresses. I I once went through the uh, the drive through at the Starbucks in the parking lot of that of mm -hmm. that comedy yep. club. Always and packed. Yeah, always back. I was getting a, a drink in the drive-thru, and the guy, the like young dude who worked there, was like, oh, dude, cool tats. Where'd you get your work done? And I was like, I, de like, I didn't get any work done. I just have like really, really <laughs> hairy <laughs> arms. <laughs> hairy. <laughs> I was like, I don't know, God, I guess. Oh, that that would be amazing. a cool tattoo, though. <laughs> that would be a cool tattoo. I was uh, similar with Becky. I was totally put at ease with, with your performance. You're very comfortable with there, which I loved. I loved all your jokes. The leather jacket works perfectly. Yeah. Thank uh, you. Thank and 
Uh, yeah, I was just I thought you were I thought you were really good. The act that was funny, and it was also funny because you actually maybe no one else can see this but me. You actually do step like side by side of the actual mic cord. It gives a nice sports bra impression. I enjoyed that very much. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate yeah, I it. That. This was an I, honor. I love you on stage. I didn't want to even hit the meow button. I could tell that you got that shit this shit already figured out, and you're just gonna fucking destroy. Like, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, yeah. oh goodness. Yeah, definitely. There's something very uh like uh Roseanne esque about. I love Roseanne. About... My dog's name is Rose. Well, She's Roseanne go. when she gets in trouble. Holy oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's cool. I, that first joke, you're, you ever go to Walmart and ask yourself why? That's like, to me, that's like as classic a joke as you could have. I mean, yeah, and I like, I just really, need something to hook some quick. And you you know? obviously have a really strong understanding of simple comedy fundamentals, which is fucking get them quick, take your time, write. I mean, everything. Be real. You, yeah, you nailed yeah. it. And exactly, be very real. And you're finding the things that are real about you that are also original. When I, I can't remember if I asked. When you said stole your bike, was that bicycle or motorcycle? I d actually do ride a scooter, but this was an actual bike, uh, bicycle. Bicycle. It may be funny to go through the list of all that terrible shit and then admit that you ride a scooter. <laughs> yeah, that could be funny. Yeah. Totally. I usually right, give a little right, like side scooter. note that uh, don't accidentally say gang rape because gang bang is fun. Oh yeah. Mm. Oh, God. <laughs> Maybe I won't do that anymore. What uh, what do you do? What, what do you do for work? Uh this is it. Bike I get uh, VA disability. So uh that's it. That's what I live on and then I'm well, you're trying to make it. Is that the veterans? Assignment? Yeah, I was in the Air Force for 6 years. Get oh, the fuck come out of here. It's an American Hell hero. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. Well, I Jesus. fucking love your She's a real patriot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think you found your new security guard. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I love it. She's hip, too. She could be like the irony patriot. I mean, I got a little joke for you, but, but it's a rape joke. You might not want do it. it but, um, you know, there's a huge problem with uh, d with uh, sexual assault in the in the Air Force. And, uh, yes, you know, it is. Yeah. It'd be funny if you were like, you know, there was, you know, a huge problem with sexual assault in the Air Force, but... Uh, I, for some reason, I was fine. I was fine. <laughs> no, it's true, because these girls were talking outside, and they're like, I'm so tired of getting hit on here. Oh, my God. And they like didn't even look at me. And I was like, oh, Jessica doesn't get hit on. Don't fucking talk to her. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't relate. Well, also, <laughs> but also, no, I'm not saying you're not hit on a bolt, but that is another dimension of yes. that joke. But also, you look like you could beat the shit out of an attempted rapist. So right. <laughs> there's that, too. I bet you could. So what did you do for the Air Force? Uh, ammo? So like, oh my uh, God, <laughs> sweet, it's wait, it's like a starship trooper. You were ammo. <laughs> <laughs> it's what they, they would shoot you out of fucking cannons. They do that. That's how bad the sexual <laughs> assault problem is with the Air Force. <laughs> I knew our budget cuts were bad, but so you would load ammo. No, we didn't load it. We actually we build it, we test it, we store it, we send it out to the flight line. Everything but load it. That's Air Force. Yeah. Is building ammo. We're like the only. Um, Should they be building the airplanes? They have. <laughs> you know they put they shoot missiles off of the yes. airplane. Oh. <laughs> they don't just they, they don't, don't just <laughs> fly around and go like, hey everybody, <laughs> shoot them, shoot them. <laughs> We're the Air Force. You're gonna be really pissed off when you see the bullets that are coming. <laughs> You're gonna hate the Marines, but we're real cool. <laughs> nice act out, everybody. Good yeah, job. Yeah, that yeah. was really good. Always. So may I? Is this rude? May I ask what what, what the dis how the disability happened? Uh, yeah, I have rude. arthritis. I have. Uh, that's good. Yes. Yeah, that's not as cool. As I, that's not as cool as I was yeah. thinking. Yeah. yeah, but somebody just <laughs> guffawed in the yeah. back. <laughs> 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 right. Like 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 she's explaining why she has her medical marijuana card or something. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's just like, oh, I bet it really hurts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bad arthritis. Oh, and I can't sleep at night. <laughs> She was I've got post-traumatic stress disorder. In the military. Yeah, have some respect. I, I would definitely talk about being in the military in, oh in a longer God. set. I would love to hear more about that. Maybe you do, maybe you don't, but just yeah. so you know, I would love to hear more about yeah. that. Yeah, 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 please yeah, please keep you. signing up for this show and yeah. doing new minutes on here. Yeah, We'd love to have you. Great. Great. Thank you so much Jessica for having me. Thank you. Job, Jessica. Holy shit. Great. Sometimes and I'm, I'm free if you guys need me to open up for you at any moment. Oh, you got it. There you go. Right, so Moshe's got a bunch of openings open up. He'd now, love to put you. Now you're pushing it, okay? <laughs> Jessica Wellington, we just found a new...
Monster. She's on Twitter at the Duchess underscore 101. The Duchess. Ooh, I wasn't la expecting la. arthritis. I was okay. hoping like something cooler than that, but whatever. I mean, well, what, think yeah. about what she did. She built ammo like Certainly, I mean, yeah. all day long doing little tinkery things. I mean, yeah. Yeah, you, you who guffawed, like without that ammo, like innocent Iraqis could not have been bombed. <laughs> I fucking love it. It's a fun one. All it's right. a perfect way to move on with a big joke like that. Whoa, okay. I actually remember this guy. He was on a few weeks ago and a week before that. Interesting. New. Brand new. Dusty Lester, everybody. Here he is. It's going to take him a minute to walk up here. Dusty Lester, everyone. Good to be at the Comedy Store, everybody. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I just came here from uh, Knoxville not too long ago. And uh, is it just me, or is parking in the state of California way too expensive? I remember when I first moved out here, I was homeless, living in my Jeep. And I had to wake up every two hours to put money in that damn meter. And I remember... <laughs> I, I, remember uh, I remember one time this dude... Uh, just got done writing me a ticket, but I was too broke to pay it, so I had to go chase him down. I was just like, hey, 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 sir, please don't give me this ticket, okay? I promise I'll move my vehicle, and I'll never forget what that guy said to me. Sir, can you please just put some pants on? <clears throat> uh, I had a great holiday. This past holiday was amazing because uh, I didn't have to spend it with my family, so that was uh, just absolutely incredible because my dad claimed, oh, shit, that's it. Yeehaw, Dusty Lester, everyone. What did your dad claim? Tell us more. I just can't get enough of it. So you're at Thanksgiving. What did your dad say? No, I was just going to talk shit about my dad because he wasn't here. So Where were you going to – oh, he wasn't there. Yeah, or he's not here, so I was going to talk a little bit. You shouldn't invite him over to your house car. Like, I, 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 uh, I, I thought you were going to go more into that, like the idea that you have the cheapest rent. I mean, like your rent costs $7.00 you know, compared to whatever, hundreds of dollars. Because there's a lot to that. There's so many people I know that actually live in their car and had to do this exact same thing. And I don't think they really go into that, the idea of having to wake up every two hours. Well, that's because uh, our friends uh, don't, uh, <laughs> the ones that live in their car don't park where there's meters at. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's true. I don't I think. I mean, <laughs> you can pretty much park anywhere you want. You could be at P.F. Chang's all night if you wanted to. Right. right. Yeah. Or is it a true joke? Yeah, but I'm not homeless no more, so. That's right on, man. Thank you. That's yeah, good that the yeah. youth of today are picking themselves up, but that's not what I was asking about. <laughs> did you really park at meters? Sometimes I did. And, and to Tony's point, uh, why? <laughs> <laughs> I'm from the south. We're a little slow. <laughs> but I, I, I did think what, what I, th I thought that it could be a good joke, actually, um, which is, you know, it turns out you d it's not the most expensive park in the world. It, you know, you got to look on the bright side. It's the cheapest rent in the world. There's some sort of flipping thing you right. could be doing. Yeah. I got evicted. It was street sweeping day. Yeah. You know, something like that. <laughs> yeah, and you could get reactions like we just had yeah. from that. <laughs> I fucked a girl in my basement or back, <laughs> right. ba back, back, back trunk. Street. I fucked a girl in her trunk. <laughs> Actually, my trunk and her ass. Boom. <laughs> Free one. Funny? Boom. It's all you, Dusty <laughs> Lester. Uh, what and also, I fucked, I, fucked a, I fucked someone who turned out it was a tranny. There. Not actually a tr I mean that the actual transmission. <laughs> yeah, not, not a tranny. <laughs> I fucked I fucked a tranny. But you know, like the actual transmission yeah, I put yeah. my dick. But in it was LA transition. so I fuck I ended up fucking a tranny. Oh, well, that's good. I mean my transmission. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> Dusty, what kind of car were you living in? Jeep. Ooh. Ooh. Jeep, so it's a fucking uh at least it's American made. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, you're more of an American than that uh, that Air Force person. <laughs> pop, the, pop the top off on that Jeep, all of a sudden your house no, no, becomes a patio. It wasn't one of those. It wasn't one of those. It wasn't all right, next bad. week, Dusty, we'll teach you how to not step on a professional comedian's line. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, you there's son a of a question bitch. from the audience? Oh, wait. Oh, wow. Look at this. An aggressive question from our friend, Chicago Open Mikey and Ellis. What's the name? Tony, ask Dusty where he's living. How did he Shit. Oh, wow. That was a oh. genuine shit. You know, that was the question was, chops. Tony, ask Dustin, where he's living and how he got there. Right. Ooh. Dusty, where are you living and how'd you get there? Well, I was homeless for three months, and one day I was walking down the street, and I saw this big house up there. And I walked past uh, 
this house, and, you know, this is at the point where I was, you know, hungry and shit, and then all of a sudden I was just like... <laughs> <laughs> I asked this guy, I was like, uh, how do you get to this house? And then, you know, make a long story short, he turns out... Uh, he was a Wait a second. You asked the guy that was on the same street as you while you're looking up at this majestic house. No, it's starving. a big house on top of uh, like Laurel Canyon or something like right. that. Right, and, and then you're walking around on the street in La on Laurel Canyon? Yeah, I'm trying to find how to get there. Where was the Jeep at? Wait, it was like way down the is street. Is this the plot of that Liberace movie on HBO? <laughs> yeah. no. It's just like TMZ shit, right? You're asking a random person how to get to a random house. <laughs> you know is that, is that right? There. I think you got it. I think I got it. Anyway, he's wait, 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 wait. We're still taking our time here. Yeah, because yeah. You, <laughs> we're not, we're not, you're not going to get to speed through this as fast <laughs> as you'd like, Dusty. Probably not. I what was the plan? Like, before you got there, I'm saying when you talked to the guy, <laughs> what was in your mind when you looked at the house? You said, oh, it's a house. And then you looked at the guy you go, oh, it's a guy. <laughs> what was the what was the plan? What? What did you say to the guy? You go, how do I get to that house? Which question am I supposed to answer? Oh, okay. oh. The question you how should be answering is, how do I not be lippy to these professional comedians? <laughs> <Right. laughs> just kidding, just kidding. How about any of them? But anyway, make a long story short. No, we're not making the long <laughs> there story There is no short. long story Jesus short. Jesus Christ. We got, a, I, have a, I, have a, I have eight fucking minutes until we get to the next part of the show, you son of a bitch. Here we go. Are you ready? Yes. So you're walking down a street. <laughs> you see this fucking house up on a hill. You're starving. You're sweating. There's fucking vultures flying around you and shit. <laughs> you're like, you're, you're about to be done. You're starving. Organs are playing in your head. You're at the fi you, you realize, uh, 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 you realize uh. that you should have drank more water on this day. And you Why do, what draws you into the house? It's just a big house. What, what draws your eye? What the dude your was eyes? walking. Or the dude was outside with his dog. Outside of what? <laughs> Outside his house. Oh, you're in front with of the house. Dog. Yes. Wait. That's wait. You're. Wait. Hold on. You're in front of the house, and you say to the guy, "How do you get in the house?" <laughs> hey, homeowner. How did you get to the fucking house on the hill? A different house that, than ah! where the. Yes. Yes. Can, okay. can we use this to never went sword? Into detail with this. Can we use this to kill somebody? Uh, I think we might have to d use it to defend ourselves in yeah, a few I minutes. Um, okay. So you're asking the guy who owns another house how to get to another house that's higher up on the hill. Meanwhile, you're not even driving. You park down below. So you're going to walk up this hill yourself instead I'm of taking the fucking Biden Jeep time, that so. you live in. And why did you? That one I can't really explain. That's not a And why a not ask random. the guy who was at an actual house? They or can outside I please come into your house? The house. They wasn't outside the house. Don't talk to us like we're crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Stop that right now, Dusty. I mean, we also have to keep in mind. We're starting a Dusty Chan in the poor we people all, section. We all slept under a roof and had a meal today. He was <laughs> a fucking homeless person at the time. I think this story actually ends with him having a beautiful, cushy bed with yes. an older benefactor. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay. Check the oil. So what did the guy say when you asked him how to get to the house? I don't know. That's what he said. Oh, I don't know. Okay, so that's the end of that Boy, part. Well, we show what he got into detail. By the way, the that's that's a part of the that. story that would have been edited out of the movie. Yeah. Okay. Wait, but do you remember when everybody was laughing though? <laughs> yeah. 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 So that was why we did. Yeah, it. that was great. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, was this how you met Louis Anderson? <laughs> <laughs> no, this is not how I met Louis Anderson. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> anyway. Uh, the dude's real nice to me. Overly nice. What dude? I bet he was. This guy. He the <laughs> Shit. Wait, the house guy? Yes. You, the guy you just said you wish we hadn't talked about for this we, long? Yes. We, we ended up talking. We ended up going to lunch, and he ended up giving me a place to live, and he's gay, and he's a producer for a major TV show, and I now work special effects on that bitch. What? <laughs> yeah. Those aren't special effects, Dustin. That's real. <laughs> Dustin or Dusty? Doesn't matter. But they're the weirdest fucking producers. Uh, oh, you think? You yeah. Have random people who accept random boys into their home or, or <laughs> and put webcams in your room and all jack off I'd together and powdered wigs. I'd right. say they do. Has, have you ever gone to sit on the toilet and you realize he's just sitting there already? <laughs> no, no. But one time, one time, seriously. One I, time. One time I got up. <laughs> I got up at 5.30. I got up at 5.30 in the morning. And you know how when you wake up you have morning wood? No. no. Well, I woke up and I forgot these gay guys were uh, early risers. 
Oh, and totally. I had this, I had this oh, big ass. Amen. Amen. By the way, it doesn't even <laughs> oh, connect. Oh, yes. <laughs> I know. That is classic, classic stereotypes about gay guys. They love house music. They rollerblade. And they be like, oh, is it Don? I am getting up to suck some more dick. Right. <laughs> right. That stereotype is true. By the way, I love that he's. Uh, I, lo I love that you made a uh, morning wood uh, reference, and you, then you said early riser, and you didn't connect how the two were funny at all. <laughs> Complete accident. That he made it the funniest thing he's set up here since he's been here. Total accident. Oh, I, I gotta acknowledge the fact that obviously our new storyline producer uh, yes, Ian Ellis yes. is in the middle of the room with his hand up for yet another question. I gotta Jesus ask what Christ. that question is. <laughs> Dude, no, I'm not saying that. <laughs> oh. I'm not saying that. What happened when he found your boxes in the bathroom? I was going to tell a good story that's not No, like you're going to tell up. that story. <laughs> Shit, man. <laughs> what you think is a good story and what Ian thinks is a good story are two different things. This stopped My being an episode of Kill Tony. Shit, man. Your mom does not have the internet, bro. <laughs> This stopped being an episode of Kill Tony and started being an episode of Get This Open Mic or Fired. <laughs> what happened when you left your boxers on the floor? I, I don't want to say it, Just man. get to the point. Dusty, you, you have to. Come on, <laughs> we're going we're gonna to close strong. I mean, it's they're not gonna, They're not going to watch this, Dusty. Come on. Okay, well, uh... I was upstairs. I just got done watching a video. What kind of video? <laughs> the good videos. Okay. okay. The good videos. Special, effe special, special effects. Special effects videos. Special effects video. Oh, you were watching a, a live feed of the the closed circuit camera that's in your bedroom. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> yes. And anyway, something somehow like got in my pants. Oh God. What do you say? Just what? fucking tell the story. What are you talking about? You're not going to get us hard, dude. Yeah. yeah. And the dude, what are you trying to do? What happened in your pants? The I came in my pants. Oh, Wait, I oh you're this. watching porno and you yes. and you came in your pants. I came in oh, my yeah. Pants. Which like, I usually take my pants off when I watch <laughs> porno, but that's up to you. No, but you know. It always solves that issue if you do. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. believe this anymore. But you know you know the oh, stereotype about how straight guys jerk off with their underwear <laughs> on? <laughs> 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 Laundry day. You do a lot less laundry if you take your pants off before you came in them. You know why they do that though? Because they just they don't have time to take it off because they got up so late. Yeah, they got up so late. They're gonna kind of run around. Right. So Dusty, you're walking around in the producer, gay producer's house. You got cum in your pants, so you're basically like you're basically like a guy swinging fucking raw meat around a Shark Tank with your cummy pants. You're walking through the kitchen. He starts sniffing around. You know they're always awake. Um, so well, they're doing poppers, you know what I mean? The loose so, so, wait a second. This story's already unbelievable, and we haven't even gotten to the end yet. Please tell me what happens now. Okay, well, he was going to get in the shower after me. How do you even know that? <laughs> like, like behind you? you? Uh, you thing? I feel like we all know how he knows that. <laughs> because it was his cum in your pants. My own cum and my own okay. pants. This mm. is the most fucked up thing I've ever said in public. Okay, so he knocks on the thing. Hey, uh, honey, I need to take a shower. <laughs> yeah, almost like that. Uh, okay. My oh. cum detector is smelling <laughs> that there's Jeez. cum in your pants. Oh, shit. There it is. Gay guys have cum, dete cum detectors. Sorry, I'll go ahead. So he's taking a shower behind you. Like, he walked in the shower behind right. you. He, he just goes, Dusty, I'm going to take a shower. He goes over to the kitchen sink and starts washing himself. What happens next? <laughs> no. You're licking him clean. <laughs> <laughs> Dusty, it's time for my shower. <laughs> Pay your rent, bitch. Pay your rent, bitch. How do you like that Kush sound effects job? It's like, Eat my ass, Dusty. <laughs> He's like, how, what do you mean? How did he know I was? He was. I, how did I know he's gonna take a shower? That's how gay men shower. They have yeah. straight homeless men lick them from right. head to toe. Dusty is basically his house cat that just licks them clean. <laughs> All right, so, Dusty, what happens next? <laughs> so make a long story short. Uh, <laughs> Jeez, uh, he spoons my cum from my boxers into his mouth. <laughs> I mean, just to, yeah, to get to the punchline of the thing, I mean, I guess that's what happened. He was hungry. He'd been up a long time. Woo! Okay, Dusty. If you, if you don't say something, we're just going to keep killing. This is why okay. I... Okay. <laughs> so he came in. 
Where? Yeah, it came in what? <laughs> it came in the bathroom. In your no. ass? It wait. came in the bathroom. He got my underwear. You're in the bathroom now? He came in the bathroom. Why do I feel I'm like... Leaving. Wait, wait a I'm second. Leaving. Wait a second. Why do I feel like that original guy from down the street's going to reappear in this story any second? <laughs> this is why I don't I take... See, <laughs> I, I see you finally found your way up the hill. <laughs> James, man. This is why nobody walks in L.A. <laughs> wow. So, wait. It leads to this shit. So he comes into the bathroom and he grabs your underwear? After I leave. <laughs> right, oh, okay. And then he grabs my underwear and I'm in my bathroom and I turn around and I'm like, what are you doing? Wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. You said you left. I left, but I turned around and then looked at him. Do you know what, leaving? I leaving? left the bathroom and he went into the bathroom and then, and then, you then I turned around. And saw him in the bathroom. Yes, and he grabbed my underwear. So you leave was... very slowly hoping something fun will happen. <laughs> sure. Okay. Yeah. You turn around and you see him like Gollum, like me precious. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Pretty much. And he grabbed your underwear and what? Underwear and licks my cum. Yeah. Out of my oh! <laughs> Whoa. Fuck you, Kim Kardashian. This episode's gonna break the internet. This is the one. Wait. Dusty, we're going to make you a star, my friend. And you're not going to even have to lick us clean or anything. Ho Wait, hold on. Did he did he did you catch him in a moment of like horny like like oh uh-oh or was he just like making eye contact with you <laughs> while he did it? Use the microphone, dude. He kind of had like an aggressive like <laughs> Whoa. Oh my god. Wow, and he did one of those? He did the bring it on? Yeah. The fucking Razor Ramon, he gave you that? Wow. <laughs> bring it, Chico. <laughs> Dusty, how did he know you had cum in your pants? You said something. No, he <laughs> just grabbed it. He'd been Does licking. he always and do that? there was that? a fucking spot. Does he always grab fucking... your underwear? or did? No, he does. Well, I don't know if he does or if he doesn't, but... This, have uh, have you been doing this for 90 days? This was just his lucky day. Have like, you finally? <laughs> finally, I, I licked it and there is cum in it. Yeah. Did he spit it back in your mouth? <laughs> no, he's he's a swallower. He's how would you know? Uh, he's a swallower. Have you have you been with a man before? No. Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> we don't care. I'm just curious. Dusty Lester, everybody. There Dust he goes. Dusty. Thank you so much, Dusty. Dusty, Dusty. Someone was kind enough. Someone was kind enough to throw their gum at Dusty from when he told that story. So we have gum on the stage right now. I'm just gonna. Uh, too bad it's not his cum. I yeah, I'm just that right up. <laughs> right. Who would throw cum on a stage at a comedy club? I don't really? know. Someone was kind of somebody, grossed out by the the cum. What well, you Somebody needs to be slapped. That's the yeah. dumbest shit I've heard. Yeah. Did somebody really throw gum at him? Yeah, it's right some, down here. Have some class. You yeah. <laughs> yeah, have some class. We're trying to tell a story about a weird <laughs> pedophile eating that guy's cum. Yeah. <laughs> some this goddamn is respect. That's why I don't live in the hills. <laughs> I much, I much prefer to live. You don't get this at the laugh factory. <laughs> <laughs> You're damn right, Earl. By the way, it was Andy Dick the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> oh. God damn. Man, that was a crazy Dusty story. Dusty Lester, I fucking love you. Thank you for moving to L.A. Uh, yeah. He's at Lester underscore Dusty on Twitter. Or at Pig <laughs> underscore Bottom. You can also <laughs> find him there. He's available there as well. Oh, God, I love it. Guys, this is the part of the show where our two regulars every week, there are two uh, comedians who do a brand new minute each week. Which is cool. very exciting, and it's always fun. Uh, your first comedian going up tonight, she uh, started here on this show and has been doing a new minute every week since. Put your hands together for her. It's Kimberly Congdon, everybody. What's up, guys? Uh, I think it's really weird when people have faces that don't match their names. You know? Uh, like a really hot guy named Vladimir. Super weird. Um, <laughs> it's like, it's like such a turn off. It's like, I, I knew I had a really, really slutty friend, really slutty, loved dick, like would purposely eat foods shaped like dicks, like bananas, cucumbers, chocolate covered in dick, like everything. And her name was Hope. 
which was really weird because she looked more like a disgrace. <laughs> she was nasty. She was like, I feel like everybody has that girlfriend they don't share straws with. <laughs> you know, because one in four straws has herpes. Okay, that's it. There it is. Yeah. 57 seconds of thunder. She did it again. How many seconds were left? Three seconds. Wow, were left. that's they, that's two, good they time. They know what they're doing. New that's minute every time. week. That's so great. It's exciting to watch. That's like locked in stuff right there. I like that whole thing. Thank you. That's yeah, fun. Funny. Disgrace. That's funny. Maybe there's. I I love that. It was very funny. Maybe there's other names too, right? Yeah, Besides yeah, disgrace. Yeah, disgrace threw me off. It needs a three. Oh, disgrace. Is that well, what you're I, no, disgrace yeah. worked for me, but. There's got to be more names. Make it longer. Right. Right. Even more. Hope works and then disgrace and, you, you know, I don't know. I'm, yeah. uh, that's why she's going to write it. Totally. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, is that a real name, though? Hope? <laughs> no, disgrace. No, but she, no. I mean, you, do you say I she wanted looked... it to sound like, I was going to say sh she, her name was Hope, but she more, looked more like, like another name, but I said a disgrace. Well, we all kind of knew you were going somewhere like that, you know. Like, so I should do something else? I don't know. Yeah, no, I would I mean, think of a different name. That's what it has to happen. You have to do something. Uh, yeah. like, but if she looks more like a Kardashian or something like, you know. Right. Like, you don't want to do that, but, you know, like. But also, I thought in the beginning, I thought that's what you guys were talking about. In the beginning, when you're like, when someone's face doesn't match their name, like an ugly guy or a beautiful guy named Vladimir, which I kind of feel like that's a beautiful name, so I don't really? know. Yeah, that's a tough one. Yeah, Ooh. but anyway, uh, or, or uh, and Sorry. then I thought maybe there's some, some sort of racist thing that you could do, like, you know what I mean? Or, I'll give know, her that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know exactly, but you know, like, like Bob's an ugly name, right? Bob's a terrible name. Because it's not just about them being ugly and hot. It's also about them, you know, <laughs> a black guy named Chip and then a, and then a really racist zinger at the end or, a, you know, a, 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 a Mexican woman not named Mom or something like that. Yeah. In, or there was this, yeah, <laughs> like a white guy named Barack. Or uh, I, right. I, I, you know, this is a brand new minute, so I would. My thought is just flush it out even more because yeah, totally. everything right. is there. But the the foundation, I think, is really funny. You can literally look up synonyms for you know disgrace or anything negative or bad and find a a, a more real sounding like it could be a name even though it's not really a name type of thing. I think. But it could be funnier to d not Kardashian because that's overplayed. Like right. most, just, but it could be even funnier to just use like a, a name that is disgraceful that is the pop culture that. Right. Isn't Bill Cosby. Bill Cosby, Bill Cosby. yeah. Right. Or, or like a woman. Or yeah. I was thinking like, or you could go in the opposite direction, which is a not a name at all. Like, you know, the, her name is Ho, but she looks more like... The main the, character from print. Black Snake Moan. Well, yeah, that, gotcha. yeah, I mean, something fun like that. But <laughs> also, you know, come guzzling curb horn. Yeah, right? exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like some <laughs> and, and then my friend <laughs> named come guzzling curb horn. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, right. You, you know that fun. classic Swahili <laughs> name, or whatever it is, you know? <laughs> You know, I, I thought of a, I thought of a guy's name that's never a good-looking guy. What? Dusty Lester. He's totally good-looking. You think so? Yeah. You Dusty should let him move in with you. <laughs> yeah. He's definitely good-looking. That's why I am. I am a little hungry. <laughs> <laughs> he, he looks better from behind, anyways. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Well, uh, fun times, Kim. Great. Thank Great you. job. Good Kimberly job, Kimberly Congdon. Kim. She's on Twitter at Kimberly Congdon. <laughs> I just, Always fun. I just had this thought, like, it'd be so cool if they got, they both got really big and famous, but they still kept coming on. Like, yeah, they're like world headliners, but they still come do their minutes. That's they only the did hope. One minute. Yeah. <laughs> that's the great hope, exactly. Wait, uh, hope. Are you talking about her friend? <laughs> or are you talking oh. about? <laughs> Boom. That sounds like the great hope. Sorry, that Callback. was that was sorry, that was disgraceful. <laughs> Boom! Double call. It's really wow. hey, ridiculous. Yeah. Like, a, <laughs> like a real cum guzzling curveball. <laughs> But then know. you get the laughs. Well, okay. Unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. Going works. in the opposite direction <laughs> of funny. Our only other regular. Put your hands together for everybody. It's Sarah Weinshank. <laughs> Come guzzling curveball. I just want to get that out. If you think that I'm normally annoyed and pissed off, then you're in for a real treat tonight because I'm getting over a rash, a full body rash which is fucking disgusting. Imagine being annoyed in general and then being itchy non-stop, like a dog with fleas. Pair that with the holiday season. <laughs> While I was driving over here and scratching myself, Feliz Navidad was playing. <laughs> over and over and over again. 
And I didn't even know if I was going to make it to do my minute spot. I got a shot in my ass, and Feliz Navidad was playing. <laughs> there aren't any other lyrics to that except Feliz Navidad. <laughs> I want to wish you a Merry Christmas from the bottom of my heart. And then it just goes into it again. <laughs> Holidays, okay. <laughs> okay. Was there anything else? Were you going to say something else? Is this real, real rash? Yeah. Is it internal? Yeah. What happened? I don't know. They think it's a food allergy? Maybe it's from a dressing like a magician's assistant. <laughs> you know what's, you know what's great? That's why you never go to the Magic Castle. <laughs> you know what's great about that joke, Tony, is that it doesn't even make sense right. what you were saying. Like, <laughs> right. how do you catch a rash from that? But it was so wonderful. It was, so it was yeah. wonderful. We so delighted in making fun of your outfit. <laughs> Uh, but it's also very bold to have a full body rash right. with a short uh, skirt that short. Yeah, That's I figured incredible. I'd just like distract and do what I could. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna do my rash material because that's what that's what I'm. Are you allergic right to anything? I I don't know. I have to go to the allergist, everyone. Whoa! You seem really pissed off about that. Like well, you thought you were superhuman and you can't possibly be. Because like rashes are disgusting. Well, I'm allergic to like uh, peanuts, certain peanuts, and if a girl eats peanuts, if a girl eats peanuts and squirts on me, I get a rash from it. No girl has ever squirted on you. <laughs> By mistake. <laughs> one time, one time, I slept with a girl at Doctor Grin's uh, comedy club in, in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and <laughs> swear to God, and the in the hotel right? room. No, not the bartender. And then I woke up in the morning, and uh, we were she was still there, and we opened the curtain, and she had this crazy rash all down her leg. Yeah, oh, man. and she was like, "No, it's just this thing she had." And I was like, "That fucking scared the shit out of me." I've been through yeah. that forever. You've been through that too. I Lysoled myself in the shower after <laughs> the girl left. Lysol. Anyways, like, imagine she saw me through my curtain <laughs> as she walked to her Lysol car. Yourself? Just Lysoling full. I. What's more disturbing, a woman seeing a, a male lover Lysoling himself, <laughs> or you seeing your benefactor eating your cum? <laughs> <your boxer? laughs> I I, I've used mouthwash on my dick just as a last resort. Yeah, yeah. I I poked my finger into uh, hand sanitizer and then um, oh, my dick hole. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. in your dick hole. <laughs> I think it's really funny. The rash thing is really funny. I, I think you look really put together and it looks really nice. But then to talk about something so right. terrible because it just happened. It's really it's really it, honest it, and really funny. Also, it, I felt like it needed a. F uh, you thought that you, it started to sound like they were saying fleas navidad or something like right. that. Correct. Right. I, didn't I thought that's a connection there. I would I wouldn't say the fleas thing. I would just move that Felice Navidad yeah. thing up like you had us when that's playing and like you painted a picture and that seems frustrating and that song's repeating itself and then when you say the part about how it's just Felice Navidad and we want to miss you a Merry Christmas from the very bottom of our heart you have to get that out pretty fast because we all fucking know the words and you're just getting through it anyway right um you know what's at the bottom of my heart a goddamn full body rash <laughs> right yeah exactly and, and how you're frustrated and you're hearing the same thing over and over again you're thinking about how somebody wrote that song and they're getting residuals on that every time it plays <laughs> and, you, and have you have a fucking have rash and, like, and you rash don't know is, why like, pulsating and, like, right you're worried about the infuriated. ringworm waking right. uh, <laughs> working its way into the bottom of your heart right? oh my god <laughs> And you're but, not making any money, and how are you going to pay your Magic Castle membership right. dues if you can't make any <laughs> money? True. I already did. Right. It's a second Magic Castle yeah. joke. No which is also which is also in the Hollywood Hills, which is interesting Steve. because the producer makes yeah. Dusty Luster wear that same outfit uh, <laughs> on Saturday nights. Can, uh, I, can I ask yeah. Sarah? Sarah, yeah. right? Yeah. Did you? I, this is actually the third time I've done this, I think. Maybe even fourth. I, and the first time I did it, I gave you some advice to uh, go to some alt rooms have you done that i'm working on that actually mm. but I w when's I've the last time i did i did like a, more than a year ago yeah. is that right is i just really think that would be the I first time with russell peters i think it was uh, like a year ago we get yeah. it dude it was a better guest <laughs> <laughs> we get it i'm fucking right here dude i've done like i've done like a few like i've done echoes under sunset yeah i just and feel like, I, like your works. style is so I'm not saying don't do the store. Do the store. Do all the clubs. Right. No, no alt c comic should ever not do clubs because then you just turn into a weakling. Mm -hmm. But for your style, it's just so built for those kinds of rooms. And I really feel like being around other comedians like that would it, it sort of engender you making more and, and becoming more creative. And I just I really think it's a good idea for you. I know I look like this, so it sounds like I have a you know right. a dog in this fight. But I, 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 I think mean, you're also <laughs> talking about a guy who. V 
very well crosses over to both. Right. So yeah. he knows both these rooms so well. So that, I think that's really good advice. You should be doing as many yeah, spots absolutely. as you can. There she goes. Funny again. Thank Sarah yep. Weinshank. We did it again. That's it. Episode 82 of Kill Tony is now over. The great Earl Skakel, everybody, is on Twitter at Earl Skakel, E-A-R-L-S-K-A-K-E-L. -E Michael Costa is at Michael Costa. Mike Costa, anything else you guys want to promote? Most Buy my family. album, fuckers. It just came out two weeks ago. Thank yeah. you. Okay, come see me in uh, San Francisco. Just go to my website. I got all kinds of crazy dates coming up. Chicago and Nashville and San Francisco and all kinds of stuff. MotionCastro.com. MotionCastro. That's Kimberly Congan and Sarah Weinshank, our regulars. I'm Tony Hinchcliffe. I'm Brian Redman, and that's Earl Skakel. Special thanks to our live audience. Hey, Josh Martin. Love you, Josh. Stick around. The Ding Dong Show is up next.